So you, you know, I, I'm, I'm losing my mind out there. I just felt unstoppable. Oh, well, he's going to the Pro Bowl again. So we're going to go get you that straight flight from Dulles to Rome. You oh, didn't yeah. really grow up in the city. London. You're not from New York. You, you're from Ohio. The Players Club is presented by Pepsi, the official soft drink of the Washington Commanders. Welcome into the Players Club. I'm London Fletcher. I got Fred Smoot filling in for Santana <laughs> Moss this week. Yep, yep. And we're joined by one of the best defensive tackles in football, Derod Payne. Yes, yes. All right, Payne, we're going to introduce you to a new segment, kind of, you know, icebreaker. Yeah, right. yeah. We're going to call this This or That. And I'm going to give you a, a two choices, and you have to choose either or. Yeah, Can't right. say both. It should right. be easy. Yeah, it should be a little bit easy. We know you're a car guy, right? So, Chevy Impala or a... Dodge Challenger. Oh, I'm going to go Impala. You going to go with the Impala? Yeah. Got right. to. Got to. My first car was a, a 96 Impala. All right. You still got that one? Yeah, I still got it. All right. Okay. Hey, hey, hey I like those choices because I'm a Chevy Impala guy. I got a 63 Impala. Yeah. That's the year my mama was born. And I got an 85 box. Impala. So I'm with it. NBA young boy or little baby? Ooh, I'm going to go little baby. Who you like? Who do you like? They, they say Lil Baby is the generational yeah. rapper. Yeah. So And plus the other guy got NBA in his name, not NFL, <laughs> young boy. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with Baby, all right, all, right? all right. Now this one right here is the, the, the question of all questions. Who's the GOAT, Jordan or LeBron? I'm going to go Jordan just because he started everything. He, he paid the way for LeBron. Thank you, a young head. Uh, yeah, I mean, no, I, like, I was, usually young kids always go with LeBron. When, when I saw that, when I was saying, I think I thought you were going to go with LeBron because nah, you're a younger guy. I'm like go Jordan, man. Yeah. It, well, that's I, a, I think Jordan broke the mold, but LeBron did a, a great job oh, yeah. of taking it to the next level. I give yeah, him that. Yeah, yeah, I give him that. Yeah, I give him yeah. that. And think about this. We still out here wearing Jordans. We ain't wearing, you know. He reselling us the same yeah, shoe yeah, the same 10 shoe. years later. We ain't yeah. wearing LeBron's not like that. They're not, no. no. They ain't wearing LeBron's <laughs> at all. <laughs> Jordan is cultural. All right, Derrod, man. So we want to kind of get to know what you've been up to this offseason. Time for the player profile presented by Pepsi, the official soft drink of the Washington Commanders. Anything changed? What, what was your offseason like? Man, offseason, I'd be laying low. I'd be in Birmingham, Alabama, training, kicking it with the family, um, uh, I don't really travel too much, man. People be trying to get me to go out. I like like staying at home, man, resting up, man. Get ready for the season. So good old country boy. Ain't yeah. nothing wrong with yeah. that. You, so, you, I'm country. Ain't right, nothing wrong. Right, right. No, no. I take that back. I'm southern. All right? That's, <laughs> we like to be called southern. Yeah. And so why not traveling? Because I know at first I didn't either. When I first got here, I, I, I would move around a little bit. But then I really got to traveling. And I started to enjoy it. Yeah. Is it that you just like familiar surroundings? I mean, I travel like in the States. Like I'll go to yeah, yeah, California, yeah, look, yeah. Miami. But not out the state. Not out the states. I, I, I tell you what, state, though. No. I was like you when I was younger. I, I would do like the, the USA type stuff. Yeah. yeah. And I would go to like Jamaica here and there. I I do regret not taking like European Being trips, trips. You know, yeah. those type of trips. And, I did it. You know, now I'm like, man, especially when I was single, I was like, yeah. you know, you can see the world. Now yeah, I got yeah. kids and the wife yeah. is like, I will say I wish I had did a little bit more that type of traveling. Go yeah. see the world a little bit more. Yeah, man, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I'll probably get out a little bit more of this of a cutting season I, if I have a good year. Oh, wait, he's he going to the Pro Bowl again. So we're going to go and get you that straight flight from Dulles to Rome. It's only eight hours. I take it all the time. That's how I go into Europe. You a country You a country boy to me. Southern. 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 You and Fred, y'all got this love for fishing. You, did, you yeah. do, did you do a lot of fishing this summer? Man, I ain't get to fish. For, I, really, this offseason, I wasn't doing nothing but training. Like, yeah. Just training. And I, I got to do some stuff with, like, some of the kids back in my uh, hometown community and stuff like that. But. I wasn't really doing too much, man. I was on the go. Like I was back and forth from here. I had I just I uh, I moved houses from uh my old little spot. So I've been back and forth. Right. Just trying but, to get stuff together. Now you mentioned doing stuff with kids and we know you got a you, you hold a, a annual camp yeah. down in your hometown. What's what's that camp like and why do you why do you uh, do that camp? Man, it's just a whole bunch of like the kids in the community like it be the same kids every year, so it's like I get to see them grow, grow, yeah. grow up mm -hmm. every year and see them improve on the little drills and stuff. So it's, it's just a bunch of fun to get to uh, get out there with them and because uh, they they some big competitors too, so they probably try to get after me a little bit. But it, it, it all be fun. 
I did the same thing you did because you don't know how much how important that is what you're doing with them kids yeah. because I had the same situation happen to me but it was Steve McNair who was throwing the camps where I'm from in Jackson, yeah. Mississippi and I remember going through the camp with him and just being around him and other pro players made me say to myself well hey I could be one of those and now you're doing the same thing and it's two or three of them kids out there that's coming for your job you yeah. know that that, <laughs> that, that <laughs> with the kids used to always tell me I'm coming for your job and truthfully they are for yeah. me when I was young it was uh I got to go to like Carlos Dansby. I got to go. Yeah, to yeah. Auburn. Like yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, you crossed over. You yeah. Auburn Tiger. On, huh? <laughs> I know Dansby. Yeah. By him having that camp, it made an impression on you. Oh yeah, definitely. That impression on me for life. Oh man, that's cool. I found this out about you last year. You got a twin brother. Yeah, Darren. And you say not in the not in the sports. He's a, he's an artist. Yeah, he's an artist, man. We tried to make him play sports. He wasn't going for it, man. Like. For the longest, all the way up until high school, my mama, like everybody, we they'll force him to go out there, but it, he's just, it just ain't in there. Is he as big as you? I've been saying yeah. identical. I know y'all visually look identical, but is he rocked up like you? Nah, he don't be lifting the weights like that. Yeah. So he ain't. He ain't so he shows you what your body would have looked like <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you never got into sports. <laughs> <laughs> What's the connection there? Because most twins almost become inseparable. Like, like they don't like to be around. I don't know. We so different. Like, it's just, it's crazy. Like, we different in all aspects. So you were like in the stomach, like, you stay over there. I'm going to stay over here. We good. <laughs> like, I don't, like, growing up, I, I usually ain't see him much because I, I, I'm always right, right, practicing, right, right, yeah, right. Yeah. doing his thing. So, but that's my dog, man. You know, when I think about what you, when you said uh, this offseason, you really didn't do too much. You were focused on so, training. Yeah, what, yeah. Was it in your mind, like, okay, I had this great season a year ago. I don't want people to. I don't want to get comfortable and, nah. and complacent. What, what was kind of your mentality? I really just knew, like the year before, all the work I put in to get to the point I was at uh, last year. So I was like, man, I, I can't really just Go sit back. down and, right, right. and chill. I need to get back on the same stuff I was on last year. So I, I just got straight to it. I gotta go back to this fishing part. Even then, you didn't go fishing. Which, what fish you like to fish for the most, and what bait you using? Cause yeah, I cheat sometimes. I, ain't, right, I just go, I, I go, I go fishing just to clear, clear my mind. Hey, oh, 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 oh I do too. So it ain't, it ain't all about what I catch sometimes. But when I do want to make sure I catch, I take me a stocking and yeah. I put some liver in it. A liver. Yeah, and I literally tie it to right there by the dock where I'm fishing it. Yeah, and it just attracts them. All of them. Yeah. Use that one. Yeah, I give you permission this, to use that one. This dude been trying to get me to go fish. I'm a city dweller. Nah, that's cool. Man, you, cool. you'll yeah. never relax and become one with nature because you're doing a couple of things. You, you, it's quiet. You can't be doing all that talking. So, usually, so you know, I, I'm, I'm losing my mind out there. You usually uh, ain't got no phone service. No right, phone right. service. And what you catch is what you eat. Yeah. So it's one of them things where you watch nature give back to you and you give yeah. to it. What's one thing, tell us one thing that about you that nobody knows? Probably, I mean, I'm country. I like around like four wheelers and stuff. I got maybe like five, six four wheelers, dirt bikes, mm-hmm. all the toys. Yeah. They probably don't know that. Well, I got that. We got that in common. I got yeah. four. I got four four wheelers too. So we do it. You like to get muddy. Oh, that's, yeah. That's, sure. that's what it's about. When the weather is bad, London, you reach for the keys of a four wheeler or a dirt bike. Yeah. Cause then it's time to get in the mud and go have some fun. Ain't nothing like it. And if you do fall, think about it. The dirt is soft. It's, it's mud. You gonna be all right. I ain't gonna lie. I'm glad I grew up in the city. I ain't about to be. You playing. didn't really grow up in the city, London. You're not from New York. You, you're from Ohio. <laughs> oh, man. Listen, stay tuned to the Players Club. We're gonna come back with more Durant. We're gonna be talking about our specialty defense. Free. That boy fast. I, I shit, been the first battle. No, no, I'm like, he, he's still gonna be that. Don't worry yeah. about that. Welcome back into the Players Club. I'm London Fletcher here with Fred Smoot and Deron Payne. We got three defensive players. We actually got every level of the every defense. Every level. Yeah, we got I'm, a D lineman, right? linebacker in the set. What would you have done if we had D line like that? Oh my goodness. Oh, oh, wow. I it's, think we would have played two extra years with a D-line like man, that. Man, I've I, sh- been the first battle. No, no, like, <laughs> he's, he's still going to be that. Don't worry yeah. about that. So, Deron, I'm going to mention a guy's name, and I want you to say the first thing that, that comes to mind. Jonathan Allen. Man, when I think about John, I just think about that hump move he always do. Like, 
<laughs> he just do it every play and it's unstoppable. <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried to uh, imitate it? I used to like I coach um my first D line coach here, Jim Tom Sula. He taught us how to do it. Yeah. He used to make us do it no matter what. But I couldn't get it like he got it, so Yeah. I still got it in like in my back pocket, but I don't really get it. You don't it. pull it out. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Amate Sweat. Free. That boy fast. Cam curl. He a dog. He'll put his nose in there. I got back that up hundred percent. Derek Forrest, default. Another freak, he was real fast. All right, my former teammate, Jeff Scanina. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Intense. Crazy. <laughs> that, that's accurate. Actually, he was crazier when, when we played, yeah, when we yeah. played with each other. It's time for Protect the House, brought to you by Johnson Kendall Johnson, the official insurance broker and risk management partner of the Washington Commanders. Where our passion is your protection. All right, man. What when you think about this defense as a unit, what what makes this group so dominant? Uh, I feel like we just got a whole bunch of playmakers like up and down the line, and uh, like I said, Sweat man, he'll chase somebody down all the way down the field. Chase, he got the moves. Ja doing the hump move is guys that can get like they could beat a block every every play if they if they have to. So. We got guys that can play around and, and just go play fast behind them. We we both played on teams and with stars. When you got star power on certain sides of the ball, usually people break off and try to become individuals. Yeah. How do y'all keep it all? It's, it's 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 all about us. I mean, I know during the games, like we we help each other. Like yeah. I help sweat. Swear to help me. Ja help me. I help Ja. Like we always looking to help each other make plays. So. So that we can get get ourselves open. Mm-hmm. As you as you kind of talk about helping each other, do y'all spend a lot of time off the field together? Oh, for sure. No, most, most definitely. Like, um, I know we we usually do like stuff on Thursdays. We might go bowling or something. Yeah. I know uh, all right, all right. season, all season we uh, try to kick it, kick it uh, a little bit. Every I, every team though got one player on it that I always barbecuing. Everybody know I can go over his house. Yeah. Do y'all have that dude? No, nah, we do the like the self. We get oh, the y'all bougie. Yeah, they bougie. Yeah, they, 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 this new generation. They Uber eating. They they what they, yeah, nah, we get he, the said, he said we, we do a uh, chef. He like, excuse me, Fred. No, no. We just nah. call over chef meal. Nah, <laughs> we, <laughs> yeah, nah, we, if we want the barbecue, we get the chef to come barbecue. That's what I'm talking oh, about. Yeah. They don't get their hands dirty. They sell. <laughs> Man, that's, New generation, London. Nah, but when I'm at home though, I, I barbecue all the time, and like in Alabama, that's my thing. So when you go home, you go back to nobody's gonna do it but us for yeah, us. Then for you sure. come back up here, yeah, you gonna go on barbecue. Yeah. That, that was the moment where you hear, man, these these players are different now. Your like, generation is different than we that, were. That yeah. right there was that. That's different. I say I used to barbecue and stuff. Barbecue, we, we like. On, I can say this: when we was here together, we was a very Tight knit group, yeah, and we pretty much could do whatever together. It didn't, it didn't bother us or nothing, and we was good at calling each other out too. And I think oh, yeah, yeah, from yeah, chilling yeah. off the field, that allowed us to call each other oh, out yeah. without anything being wrong with it. Yeah, man. So, Zerah, you, you're coming off a, a Pro Bowl season. What, you know, was your mindset as far as helping you move into this season? Like when you when you went back and looked at your film from a year ago, like man, I know I had, you know, this these many sacks, but it was so many more right. I may have left out or maybe I want to stop the run a little bit more. I want to, yeah. you know, do something different. I mean, last year, I was just big into my, like, goals. Like, I make goals every day. Like, mm-hmm. I have goals set for practice mm-hmm. and for the games and for the year and stuff, and I just try to mark them off every chance I could get. So this year is just about setting new goals and, and beating them and making more goals. I don't see you respond much to much. You kind of like one of these guys you, you see on this line. You never too high. You never too low. Yeah. But I seen when they uh put your Madden rating out there. You oh. didn't like that. T- talk to me about Madden Man. because we did all have problems with the Madden rating. Tell me how you feel about it. I don't know. I just felt like it was personal. <laughs> <laughs> we always feel like it's personal. Because I had a good I had a good year and I ain't. Like what what my, was your rating? Like an eighty three. Eighty three. But oh, it was the same. It was the same. Like last, last year, the year yeah. before. Oh, yeah. that's too low. I, I, but you that's know what they low. do, right? After the year you ball ball, 
They want to see you ball ball again before they put you in the ninety. But you can't come back. To oh, the I, it. That's I, what I'm saying. They like you I had to call Chad Johnson. Like, what y'all doing to my boy Payne? Because he <laughs> what, a jester. What's the what's what's been your highest Madden rating? Ninety one. Ninety one. What you about think, yours? What do you think my highest was? What, 93? 93. Yeah, 93. I was hot, too. No, what, you <laughs> mad, yeah. what you mad about 93 for? You seven you points know, away from good. perfect. No, that's, you, that's, that's, that's crazy, but I, but I felt the same way you did. Like, man, I balled. This thing should be a lot, lot, yeah. little bit higher than the 93, man. Did, it have, did your 93 making you hot have something to do with Ray Lewis? Because it's always yeah, our yeah, other yeah, competition. I'm glad this is a safe space where we can tell the truth. <laughs> nah, for sure. Like, you'll look at other people like along the D-line in the league, you'll yeah. be like, damn, how, how he get these numbers better than mine? And I had how low it's in, in the Giants higher? That's what I want to yeah. know. Exactly. Yeah. So you probably felt the same way when you saw the NFL top 100 list. Oh, for sure, man. That, I ain't going to lie. That hurt my heart. <laughs> <laughs> hurt my heart. <laughs> but it, it motivated me too, though. So yeah, yeah, I can say good. what hurt you always motivates us. So I, I don't see it as a bad thing. I see it as a good thing. All right, man. We're well, cool. We're about to look at your most rewarding moments from last season. Yeah. It's time to check out Deron's most rewarding moment, brought to you by Fanatic Sportsbook, the most rewarding sports book. Bet responsibly. Deron, you had a heck of a season last year. What was your most rewarding moment from that? I mean, being able to go to the Pro Bowl was fun, but um, I think, I don't know. It's just, it was something about that first game against the uh, the Jags. Like, yeah. I just felt unstoppable. Like, yeah. I knew it was going to be a good year just because I was hitting the quarterback all all game long and uh, just getting after them boys. So I felt like that was just a big reward for me for all the hard work I put in during the offseason. Oh, yeah, no doubt. I remember that game. Stay tuned because when we come back, we're going to look at some of your biggest plays from last week against the Arizona Cardinals. You guys took over that game. You and Sweat took over yep. that game. When you rushing with guys like Sweat, man, yeah. you just got to be ready for the ball to come out at any right. moment. yeah. What's up, Commander Sand? This is your boy Brian Mitchell here. And the question has been, will that be a pre- and post-game show? Well, the answer is yes. I have Santana Moss help me with the pre-game show. B. Mitch, I can't wait. You can catch us on YouTube, Facebook, and X. And I have Logan Paulson help me break down the post-game show. Yeah, I got to bring some reason to your madness, man. <laughs> well, Logan, somebody has to. You can find us one hour before the game, and you can find us immediately after the game, breaking it down like nobody else can. I got a lot of faith in this room right here, man. We gonna start fast and we gonna end fast. Mm. Dogs on three. One, two, three. Oh. Oh. Welcome back into the Players Club. I'm London Fletcher. Got Fred Smoot and Deron Payne. We're gonna check a, take a look at some of Deron's dominant plays from the game against the Arizona Cardinals. Let's take a look at Deron driving towards greatness, presented by Eastern's Automotive Group. Any car, any way, for everyone since 1988. Ooh, ooh, Deron, I, 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 you shock me how quick you are sometimes. Like I know you big, strong, and you fast, but sometimes you really shock me how quick yeah. you are. When you when you have a get off like that, did you have a feeling like they were about really, to run? Really, like the teams like that, they go fast. They try to go fast and get you to go sideways, but you just go to the you. back door. Yeah, yeah. Right here, I feel like I had missed a couple of tackles beforehand. I felt like I was going to miss that tackle, but I was like, no, nah, I ain't. I can't let that. Hey. <laughs> hey, I like how you kick your leg up. Because let me go tell you, I used to do the same thing. <laughs> I wasn't letting that one go. Put that knee up. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, I used to do the same thing. The Ross said, I ain't missing this tackle. Nah. All right, this right here. Oh, this play right here, man, they had, like, they they real, like, they double team real, real hard. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I had just got to the point where I was tired of it. So I was like, you know what? I got a key. I just got a key that the tackle was coming down hard right. on me and I just threw him by. And, and I mean, that's a play. quick, like, arm over, well, almost well, like yeah. a pass rush. Well, yeah. yeah. And so pass early in, in that game, game. You, they doubled. So you like, okay, that's growth as a, as a, yeah. as a player. Just man. learning how they're trying to attack you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, nah, that's excellent right there. 
That's that's higher than the eighty three rating on Madden. Yeah, yeah, we got to talk to him. <laughs> and right here, we had a, I had a little exit game with James Smith Williams. But like when you rushing with guys like Swift, man, you just got to be ready for the ball to come out at any right. moment. Yeah. So I just be trying to have like good extension so I can just come off and yeah. yeah I see you keeping like keeping that. that arm locked out so they can't really get their arms on you. So. I, I tell you this, man. This. You guys took over that game. You and Sweat took over yep. that game in the second half. Man. Yeah. This, this is how you do it, man. We appreciate you coming on the Players Club. The Rod, we got uh we got a kind of tradition here. We're gonna have you sign our helmet. There you go. Sir. All right, man. Thanks for watching the Players Club. We'll see you next week. Want more great commanders podcast content? We have a few you have to tune into. Every Monday, the mouth of the South, Fred Smooth and Michael Jenkins, get loud. Get loud. <laughs> <laughs> About commanders and pretty much any other topic you can think of. And on the Command Center podcast, Santana, Logan, and Fred Smooth do a deep dive into the commanders' matchups. It's the best insight you can get. Check them out wherever you get your podcast and over on our YouTube channel. He ain't lying.